Do you know what confuses Excel beginners? And even some intermediate users the most? Okay, watch as I copy this cell and paste it in the cell below. Did you see that? The copied value is different from the source value. Hmm. That is not a glitch or a mistake. In a minute, you'll know exactly why and see it's actually one of Excel's most powerful and useful features. As always, I start with the same quick basics to avoid any confusion. As you may know, an Excel sheet is a grid of columns and rows. When columns and rows intersect each other, they form many rectangular boxes called cells. Each cell has a generic name called cell reference. For example, the name of this cell is D5 because it is in column D and row 5. So D5 is the name or cell reference of this cell. A cell reference like D5 tells you where the cell is, while the cell value is whatever you type inside the cell. For example, if I type 200 here in this cell, now the value of this cell becomes 200. I can change it to a different value by simply typing over it. You can also use a cell reference to bring a value from one cell into another. For example, if I type equals D5 in any cell like this, it gives me the value contained in cell D5. If I change the value in D5, the referenced value here automatically updates to the new value of D5. So, the value you see in a cell can be a reference to other cells. If you want to see that, you can click on the cell and look at the formula bar here, or simply double click on the cell itself. Double clicking a cell puts the cell in edit mode. In this case, you can see that the value in this cell came from cell D5. To exit the edit mode, simply press the enter key on your keyboard. That is the basics. You now know what a cell reference is and what a cell value is. With that, Let's move on to the main and interesting topic, relative and absolute cell references. First, relative cell references. To make it easy, let's revisit the example we saw at the very beginning of this video, where I copied a cell and pasted it in the next cell below and realized that the copied value was different from the source value. Now, in this example, if you double click inside the source cell, you'll see it is a cell reference, B4. That means it is pointing to cell B4 and holding whatever cell B4 is holding, right? Now, when I copied this cell and pasted it in the cell below, the cell reference of the copy became B5 because the pointing direction also moved with the copy action. Notice the original or the source, which is one cell above, is still B4. If I copy and paste it into the cell above, the copy cell reference becomes B3. Again, notice the original, which is one cell below, is still B4. So, here, the copy cell points to cell B3. Just like that, copying the cell to any other cell on the sheet also copies the reference direction in such a way that the copy now points to a different cell, as you can see here. Because of that, cell references like B4, B3, B5, and so on are relative cell references. That means the cell the new copy points to will be located relative to the copy location. Now, let's see a practical example to understand why this behavior is an extremely useful feature in Excel. The logic and functionality you are about to see works for any type of data. For this example, we have a list of products sold by a business with quantity sold and unit price for each product. Let's add a new column here for total price. Total price, as you can tell, is unit price multiplied by quantity. Let's do that for the first product here. The cell reference for the unit price of the first product is C2, as you can see. So, here, I type C2 multiplied by the quantity. The cell reference for the quantity is B2. So, the formula to get the total price will be C2 times B2. Now, we get the total price here for this first product. We also want to find the total price for each of the rest of the products. But we don't have to retype the formula. All we have to do is copy the first cell and paste it in each of the cells below. 
To easily do that, point to the bottom right corner of this first cell until you see a small cross, like this. Then, double click or hold and drag your mouse all the way to the last cell. The formula in the first cell is now copied to each of the cells below. Notice, the cell references of the copies are automatically adjusted relative to each of the copy locations. For example, if you look at the first copied formula, the cell references are copied as C3 times B3, not C2 times B2. If you see the next one, they are copied as C4 times B4. The next one is copied as C5 times B5, and so on. That means the calculation in each total price cell is multiplying the corresponding cells in the unit price and the quantity columns. That is the power of relative cell references. It saves you time because you don't have to retype formulas in cases like this, and it also avoids the risk of making typing errors as you only have to type the formula just once. But sometimes you don't want cell references to change when you copy a cell. That means you want the copied cell reference to stay exactly the same as the original. In that case, you need to convert the cell reference from a relative to an absolute cell reference. To convert a cell reference into an absolute cell reference, insert a dollar sign before each character of the cell reference. Like so. Now here, the cell reference dollar sign B, dollar sign 4, is an absolute cell reference. You can also use the F4 button on your keyboard to switch back and forth between relative and absolute cell references. But don't worry about the F4 button here. I'll cover that in a future video about Excel shortcuts. Now that we have an absolute cell reference in this cell, if you copy and paste this cell anywhere, the copied cell reference remains the same and always points to the same cell the source cell points to. Because making a cell reference absolute locks it in place when you copy the formula. The question you may be asking right now is, why do we need to lock cell references? Well, let's see one practical example to show you a case where absolute cell references are preferred instead of relative cell references. Taking our list of product sales again, let's say the business offers a holiday discount of 5% on all sales across the board. To show the discount amount for each product, let's add a new column here and name it discount. Now, one way to calculate the discount is directly multiply the total price by 5%. Notice for the total price, I entered the cell reference of the first total price which is D2, and multiplied it by 5%. Then, copy that formula down for the rest of the items. But, if you want to change the discount rate later for any reason, for example from 5% to 8%, you have to go to each cell and manually change it one by one. Especially if you have a long list of data, it will take you a lot of time, as you can imagine. Instead of applying the discount in this way, first enter the discount rate in any cell on the sheet, like so. Then, go to the first formula and remove the hard-typed 5% and replace it with the cell reference of the discount rate, which, in this case, is F2. You will get the same discount amount. You can then copy this formula to all the rows below. Well, there is a problem here with the copied values, as you can see. They are all zeros. That is because we used a relative cell reference of the discount cell, F2 here. As you saw previously, relative cell references change with a copy-paste action. For example, if you look at one of the cells copied, the cell reference copied is F3. F3 is an empty cell located right below the discount rate cell. Excel treats an empty cell as zero when performing operations such as multiplication. So, the total price here is multiplied by zero, resulting in a zero calculated amount. To prevent the cell reference from shifting when copied, we have to lock it by converting it into an absolute cell reference. To do that, just add a dollar sign before each character in F2. We get the same discount amount for the first cell. Also, when you copy this cell into each of the cells below, 
it copies as you would expect, giving you the correct discount amount for each. Because the cell reference of the discount rate is an absolute reference, it does not change when copied. If you look at the copied cell references below, they are all copied as the same cell reference, F2. Now, if you want to change the discount rate, all you have to do is change the discount rate only once in F2 here. That will update all the values in all cells automatically, saving you a lot of time. And of course, avoiding any risk of making errors. Great. You just learned a powerful common feature of Excel. Cell references? Their relative and absolute powers. That was it for now. Don't forget to leave any question or comment you may have. Thanks for watching.